Hello everyone and welcome to the History Unicorn, Reddit Finds. Today we are exploring the world of the paranormal, from the subreddit r slash paranormal encounters, and r slash supernatural encounters. Links to the original posts are in the description below. Let's dive in and find out exactly what is making us question our sanity. This is not a story, this is a real occurrence. This is the last thing I've resorted to. I don't know where else to turn with these experiences, because nobody else believes me. Except those who were involved. Hello, I live in the Appalachian Mountains, if that helps with the story any. Now I've heard plenty of spooky stories about the Appalachian Mountains and North Georgia and everything. But never really thought much of it. My grandfather has told me plenty spooky stories about these mountains to keep you up at night. But those are stories for other times. It was late one evening and I just got off the phone, with my boyfriend. We'll call him Tom. Tom had told me he was at his house working outside, as well about a quarter of a mile away from me. I hung up on him and continued my job, which was shoveling gravel into holes in my driveway. It was dusty dark outside, I could still see perfectly fine. The only difference was you couldn't see the sun anymore. As I took a small break to stretch and rest my back, from shoveling this gravel all day in the August heat. I looked down my driveway and saw Tom walk behind my blue ram pickup truck. So instinctively I ran down there to ask what he was doing here, but about halfway down the hill the eerie, gut-wrenching feeling set in. Tom was at his house, and I never seen him pull into my driveway. I stood in the middle of the hill, just frozen. Unable to comprehend what I saw. But against my own conscience, I decided to go and check if what decided to pretend to be Tom was there. And just like that, it was gone. Nowhere to be found? And I know you could easily mistake seeing someone but not like that. That looked exactly like him. His rugged blue jeans, his red lanyard he wore on his side, his mangled work shoes. Everything, right down to every detail. I stopped working on my driveway late after that. The next incident really freaked me out. I don't like people, if you know me personally, only a select few. Tom and my dog are two of them. One night my little brother came over to my place to help me with my fireplace outside. Well he was doing some final touches to it, and I was in my bedroom on my bed, with my dog laying next to me. My dog is a two-year-old German Shepherd, her name is Ren. So I was sitting alone with Ren, scrolling on my phone, as usual. And I hear my brother scream for Ren. 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 Get down here now. I thought to myself, what is he talking about? She's laying right next to me. And my brother comes into my room, and looked at me and Ren in confusion. What's wrong? Why was you yelling for Ren? I asked. She was just outside. My brother replied with a sickening look on his face. That's impossible, she was here with me this whole time. I told him. My heart's starting to pound. I don't know she was outside it was her I swear. It even had her scars on her leg. It was her? But brother you know that's not Poz. I know what I saw. He said in a booming voice. He left my house the very same night. I don't know what to do, I don't know where to turn. I've tried talking to everyone I knew about it, but they just thought it was another story I came up with. But it's true, all of it. People just don't take me seriously, so in a moment of desperate plead, I turn to Reddit. If you have any idea what this is, or what I can do about it. Any information will help. I just don't want to end up. Edit. Sunday, October 9th 2022. My dog has been acting strange lately. Not her usual self, Ren is usually. A very playful and silly dog. She's been acting more alert? Even frightened as you will. It's not like her, even normally she'll sleep in the floor. Because she's hot, but she started getting under my bed and sleeping there instead. She's never done this before. I understand that dog's demeanor will change with age, but I never thought it would be this much of a change. I just want to know what happened to my girl. Here are some of the comments, from this post. 
Perfect Paramedic 65 commented. Honestly sounds like a shapeshifter or a skinwalker. Tricky. Don't be scared and don't fear it. You have full control. It is getting closer to you Toe. First it was the driveway, now it's the front yard. Medium subs and also cleanse yourself and your space. Do Olympia or whatever the equivalent is for your region's common religion. Or do a cleansing that works for you. But definitely cleanse your house. Use Florida water or holy water with soap and a little ammonia to wash the walls, the doors, all the corners you can reach. Tables, countertops, bathrooms, etc. Clean everything. Leave the windows open while you do. Buy some Palo Santo and use that around your house as you pray for protection and healing, and good things to come around your family. Anything evil will not be tolerated near you or your family. Cleanse yourself too. And anyone who har been in your house or near it. Take a cleansing bath, research herbs for protection and banishing. You may want to research your local region's popular paranormal beliefs, as well. Get some salt and put it around your whole property in a big circle after you cleanse the inside of the house. These are definitely things you can do right now. Hope this helps. Josette 22 also commented. I believe what this has been is one of the mimics from the forest. They can appear as friends or loved ones, and even sound like friends or loved ones. They can also take the form of an animal. Let me know what you think about OP's experience. What do you think is mimicking their loved ones? I've had some strange experiences growing up in the northwestern part of Montana. I'd like to share my first one. We were living in Summers, near Flathead Lake. I was around five years old. I lived with my mom, dad, and newborn brother. Our house was a one-story rancher that was pretty secluded. My mom worked nights at a casino, and sometimes would sleep on one of the couches in the living room when she got home. I wanted to sleep by her, so I tried to sleep on the other couch, facing the dining room and kitchen area. The oven light was on, casting a soft yellow light. I was laying on my side, looking towards the kitchen. I woke up and what I saw was a disembodied shadow in the shape of a human arm sticking out of the wall. It extended from the side, as if sandwiched behind the fridge in the kitchen, and the walls separately the living room. It had a slight bend at the elbow. Its palm facing up towards the ceiling. I noticed it was holding something in its hand. It like it was holding a brain. I remember the pink and grey color. It was shaped like seeing the human brain from the side. I was more disturbed by this observation, even more than the shadow limb itself. The light from the kitchen is behind the arm, making it very prominent and out of place. I laid there looking at this thing for a while. It never moved. I don't remember being very scared, but definitely confused and unsettled. I don't think I was dreaming, or experiencing sleep paralysis as I was able to lean up to try and get a closer look. I eventually fell back to sleep. This memory is so vivid to me. I hope I did a decent job describing my experience, but if anyone has any questions or observations, I'd love to try and answer discuss them. I have some more possible paranormal experiences, but that would be a lot to write in a night. I'm excited to share, and I hope others may find it interesting. Here are some of the comments, from this post. The Enlightened be commented. That's super interesting. But I believe that area, is on the Flathead Reservation. Seems to be a lot of activity up there. Did you see anything else down by the lake? OP responded to the Enlightened Bee. My dad would take me to the lake quite a bit, but I don't have any memories of anything out of the ordinary happening there. I experienced more paranormal activity at the house. But I remember the town, mountains, and lake having an otherworldly feeling about it. I was terrified of the small field behind our house. When I was a little older we moved to Kalispell. My brother and I talked recently about what we experienced there too. Talking with him made me want to make a post. Xylogos also commented. Very interesting. I had no idea what to expect from the title. This does seem paranormal to me, but I have never experienced anything like it, personally. I might think of it as more alien than ghost type activity. I love that you weren't scared by it, but more curious than anything else. Do you or your brother have any memories that could indicate alien encounters? Those kinds of events are also considered paranormal. 
Thanks for sharing. I hope you will share more in later posts. OP responded to Xylorgos. My brother and I have some experiences that might be alien encounters. My brother opened up to me about an experience he had when we were living in Kalispell. He was around four and I was around eight years old. We were playing in the backyard with a neighborhood friend on the trampoline. My brother describes at one point he jumped and the next minute he was high in the air. He said it felt pretty high, maybe 10 or 15 feet. He was screaming down at our friend and I, but we were frozen and not responding to him. He said it felt like a few minutes being suspended, then everything was back to normal. He never said anything to me about it, until we recently talked. My brother is now 28 years old and I am 32. He has a daughter, who is now 3 years old. When we were talking, I brought up that my fiancé found a triangle-shaped welt on my back. He got wide-eyed and said he also had a triangle-shaped mark on him. And his daughter had one on the back of her neck. We all got the same mark, about the same time, on different parts of our bodies. I have some memories of seeing beach ball-sized orbs outside the window of our old house, in Summers and Kalispell. Sometimes a single orb, sometimes a few. I haven't seen that since I was a kid. But with the strange marks on our bodies, maybe we are still having these encounters. Xylorgos responded to OP. From what I've heard and read about abduction phenomena, people generally seem to experience multiple events throughout their lives. Those marks are really intriguing. Have you considered having some hypnosis, to see if there are vague memories that you'd like to explore? Let me know, in the comments below. What do you think about OP's experience? What do you think OP encountered? A sort of follow-up to a post about my native grandmother's encounter with a giant owl. This is about my native dad instead, as he has had a few supernatural things happen to him. And the rest of the family in Oklahoma, as well. My father would frequently encounter small little people, no bigger than a pinecone, called minipeds. His go-to story about the minipeds. When he was around 10 years old, he would go fishing in the lake near his childhood home. My grandpa would take him sometimes, but when he was at work or getting treatment in Oklahoma City, he would go alone. The thing about the lake and creeks in the area were the mists that would roll in. Not too high, only about a foot off the ground, if not less. And would cover most of the area for hours at a time. This particular time, he went out fishing. He got closer and closer to the misty edge of the lake. As he approached, he would hear voices. He originally thought it was the wind, but walking further along the path, he realized it was voices. Nothing he could recognize or understand, but definitely dozens of small little voices around him. Feeling a bit frightened, he made his way back home, where my grandma, was home as well, at the time. He told her about it, and she just told him everything was okay. Those voices were minipeds and as long as you didn't bother them, they won't bother you. In fact, if you should get lost at the lake, they could help get you home. Still scared, he didn't go fishing that day. The next morning, however, he had all but forgotten about the encounter and set off to go fishing again. Going down the same old path he always went down, he again noticed the mist a foot above the ground, and again small little voices. Keeping in mind what Grandma said about not bothering them, he just kept about his business and made it to the edge of the lake. The voices died down a bit, and he was able to enjoy fishing in peace. He said he finished for a good two hours or so before heading back home, and along the path he again heard the voices. This time, however, along the misty path, he would see it move left to right, as if something small under it was moving quickly and moving the mist in the process. He rarely saw a minaped, but the few times he did see them before moving to Texas, he said they were human-like, with grey skin or brown skin, and only a few inches tall. When he encountered them again, as an adult. He was fishing with my uncle on my mother's side. They went fishing pretty often, when I was growing up. Five times every summer, it seemed. They either went to one of the lakes, in the Panhandle area or New Mexico, and of course, Oklahoma. The one time they went to Oklahoma. They went to a lake close to the one he grew up in, only 50 or so miles west. There they set to get on a boat. My uncle owned to fish on the lake. But on the way there was a mist, of course. And the sound of little voices. My dad thought nothing of it, 
but my uncle was starting to get confused, asking if my dad heard voices in the wind. He told him not to worry, and that they were just minipeds. And if you didn't bother them, they wouldn't bother you. Eventually, it freaked my uncle out too much, and he convinced my dad to go fish at a lake back west in Texas. He didn't see any that time and I have had yet to see one. Probably because any time we visited family, it was in Oklahoma City and we never went to a lake or anything. At least not any visit I remember. I do hope to encounter them though. I mean, if my dad believes they exist even into adulthood, then maybe they do exist. What do you think, native nonsense or plausible creature, yet to be discovered? In the comments below, let's answer OP's question. What do you think, native nonsense or plausible creature yet to be discovered? When I was like 15, I moved into my sister's old room and soon heard something crawling in the attic above me. I told my mom, and she never believed me, until one day she was in my room and heard it as well. My stepdad crawled in that attic several times since then. Something to do with construction. And he said he never saw any rat, or droppings or any sign of anything up there. I also recently spoke with him, and he assured me the attic is sealed off, so nothing can even get in there. It has been 17 years and I still hear something crawling up there, whenever I'm in this house. I've never thought of it being a gnome. Until recently, because I am kind of obsessed with seeing one. I believe one actually randomly removed a stain from my clothes several months ago. My overalls were sitting on a chair, for a few days. And I remembered the stain, I go check and it's gone. Swear. It was on the chair drying instead of going into dryer, because I didn't want the stain to cook into the fabric. Thought I would try to remove later. Few days later. Nothing was ever there. I have left offerings from time to time, so maybe they're throwing me a bone. Last week my friend and I are laying on his mat, on the floor. In said house. We hear. Some sort of drum roll within the mat or below. As if someone was tapping it with their fingers. I asked. Do you hear that? He's just like, yep. I'm like WTF. And right then something crashes into something right outside the window. The drumming stopped. It was so weird. My stepdad again confirmed the only thing beneath us is concrete so he's starting to wonder as well. I get home, the other day and right in the entryway, is a canvas painting on the wall. For some reason, I saw a blue orb shine through the canvas. I thought that's odd. Is there a device behind here? Nope, there wasn't. And I'm starting to hear knocks right around that wall now too. A few weeks ago, in same house. I woke in the middle of the night and heard tapping on my mirror. I feel like I'm seeing something from the corner of my eye, but my vision has been iffy since Covid, so who knows. Oh, also in the beginning of the shutdown. I woke up to a wooden flute playing in my ear and three knocks at the door at night with no one there. I've had spiritual experiences in life, and at this house, so I don't know if it's multiple things or just Faye. Thanks for reading. Let me know, in the comments below. What do you think was in OP's attic? So I'll start this by saying, these events all happened years apart. And the first encounter isn't exactly a shadow, but I think it ties in. So many years ago, like 20 or a few more. I was just a child, and like a lot of children, I was afraid of the dark. Most nights I would walk down the hall to my parents' room and ask my father to stay with me until I fell asleep. This particular night, I remember being awake as my dad slept beside me, on his stomach. My bed, at the time, didn't have a solid headboard, but bars that you could either put a hand through or under. At some point during the night, I lay there on my side, one hand under my pillow, and suddenly I felt a hand come up from under the metal bar of the headboard. I distinctly remember it being bumpy and rough, but definitely a hand and to this day I struggle to believe it was my dad's. Since it felt all wrong as well as the positioning of it. Seeming to me to be too difficult for a person to comfortable achieve even accidentally while sleeping. The shadow in the hall. Perhaps a year or so later, I remember waking again during the night. Feeling somewhat scared, and decided to walk down the hall. As I had done many times like I mentioned before. I reach my parents door and sure the handle is. It's locked. 
not a big deal. I can manage a night alone. That is, until I turn back towards my room. I had partially closed the door, when I left and I could see faintly the light from the streetlight coming through my window. But suddenly that light was blocked almost entirely and my door began slowly to open wider. Now I did what any kid would do. I screamed and began pounding on my parents' door. It was only a few moments before they opened it, but it felt like forever. They took a look down the hall, lights on and everything. They found nothing of course. But I knew better. Lastly, the figure in my dream and then in my room. This happened only about a year ago. I was 28 at the time. I was sleeping and dreaming, which is unusual for me. In the dream, I stood in an old cobblestone alleyway. Old buildings on all sides and a fog rolling in. I knew there was a figure walking towards me, but I had it in my head to jump out and scare them. So I hid in a smaller alcove waiting, the moment arrived the figure should be right outside the alcove. I try to jump out. I can't move. I'm not frightened more annoyed that my lame prank won't happen. The figure turns the corner, looking at me, as if knowing I was there. It's completely black shadow with lighter grey ripples almost like smoke, covering its entire form. It leans in close and in almost a whispered voice, it asks me. What do all little boys like? Now I'm a sarcastic F and I'm not frightened at all, so I reply. PP touches. In a mocking voice. Suddenly the alleyway's gone and I get a sense of immediate anger, but then I can see my room clear as day. The figure is in the corner and moving slowly towards me. I blink, it's closer, I blink again, and it's at the foot of my bed. I still can't move, but I'm fighting too. It reaches for me and I bolt upright and it's gone. Haven't seen anything since. Let me know, in the comments below. What do you think was interacting with OP? The stories so far have been head scratchers and a little chilling. If you're enjoying this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more in our paranormal series or any of our series, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to never miss a future video. If you would like your encounter featured on a future video, you can send it to contacthistoryunicorn at gmail.com. You can submit anonymously, or I can give you a shout out, just let me know your preference in the email. Share in the comments, what you think about the encounters we've discussed so far. This is the native grandmother story, hinted at in our previous native father's encounters with small people encounter. My grandma recently passed, and I wanted to share a story she used, to tell. Now some of the supernatural or paranormal stories weren't really that scary, more mythical like the stories both her and my dad would tell of little people, called minipeds. Or little people. The name might be a rough spelling as it was in Kiowa Tanoan and I don't know the spellings of it. But that's how it sounded in English. But there was one story she'd always tell, when we drove around the old road around Mount Scott and Lake Lautenka, near Medicine Park in Oklahoma. In the late 1960s, before having my dad. But had my uncle for about five years. She lived close to the tribe in Carnegie. But still lived closer to Medicine Park. Usually she would go to Carnegie during the week for groceries, as she worked nights at her job during the weekend. But on the odd occasion she'd go to Medicine Park to get whatever groceries we needed. That weekend she either forgot or didn't get enough off. The reason she did, is because there were no stores in Carnegie that were open late in the night. But there was one in Medicine Park. She then told us that the mountain we drove around was sacred to the tribe. And were promised that no road would be built there by the government, in the 1900s. But of course they built some there anyway, so when driving you can get a good view of the mountain, and the lake closer. Because of this it is now haunted by a spirit that's aggressive, if you drive at night. Now a lot can agree that native creatures and supernatural stories were just made up. But this was the first real event that made her believe more than what she thought was real. Regarding native ghost stories. This particular night, the clouds covered the moon and stars. So it was darker than usual. It didn't bother her much as she can still see the road, and I'll be damned if I'm wasting gas to Carnegie. But around halfway through the trip, her car stopped. Just, turned off by itself. She thought it was weird, but probably just something wrong with the car. She went to turn it on and nothing. So she tried a second time. Immediately after attempting to start it a second time, 
she said she heard something whoosh above the car. Then she started it a third time, and it worked. But in the span of about four seconds, she said she saw a large black figure in the middle of the road. Not six feet away from the car. When she noticed, she said it reacted to the lights shining, as it quickly turned its head and showed its big glowing eyes. It then flew up into the air, never to be seen again. She just called it the owl, but me and my brother like the name Owl Man better. Kind of a joke as we're obsessed with the silly cryptids like Frog Man. But the reason she claims this was a significant encounter was. Because owls in our tribe are taboo, and are said to be bad omens. If you see one, it means one close to you is going to die very soon. And about a year after, when my dad was less than a year old. They found out my grandpa had cancer. It would be a little over a decade before he died from it, but the owl and the bad news were not coincidental. Now do I believe it? Yes, I do. My grandma was dead set on it being a true story, and my dad believe it too. Probably because he also had stories of paranormal stuff happening to him. He said it himself. There are things out there you can't even imagine. Think of how many times things sounded fake, until it was found or had happened. If I ever get with my dad again soon, I'll ask him more about those kind of things and maybe post them, but for now, what do you think of this encounter? I know it didn't happen to me, but it happened to someone who was very close. Plus, I never see native paranormal encounters, other than Skinwalker or what have you. Let me know, in the comments below. What do you think OP's grandmother encountered? Was it paranormal or something more mundane? When I was around 12, at the time, four years ago, I would play tag at night with my friends next door. I call them L, is, and M for privacy purposes. One night, I was playing as usual when I was hiding under the tight space under the deck. I smelled a rotten stench and saw a black mass of something turn and face me. I acted like any normal 12 year old, and got out of there as fast as I could. Only to be tagged. I was annoyed but saw someone running up into the treehouse, so I ran over and hid. Waiting for them to come out. About five minutes later, I got impatient and decided to sneak up into the treehouse. Well, no one was up there and as I put my foot up onto a step, to the second floor. I guess you could call it. A slimy, damp hand tightly wrapped around my ankle. I got free but fell over the railing and hit my head pretty hard. I opened my eyes only to see a tall, like I'm talking 8 feet tall here. And I'm 6 foot 2, around 5 foot 10 at the time. Anyways, I see this thing. But I can't move, I try to scream, but nothing happens. I know what you guys are possibly thinking, and no. Not sleep paralysis, I've had that before and this was different. It shot down and wrapped its hand around my throat. It said. Run. In my ear and a sharp harsh tone, kinda like Vecna mixed with Will Ramos. Lorna Shaw, for anyone who doesn't know. As soon as it says that, I can move again. But it is gone, but my neck is still in pain. I get up and book it, but get stopped by L. He spins me around and asks where I have been, and that they have been looking for me for 20 minutes. I tell him what happened and he calls bullshit. Saying they looked behind the treehouse multiple times. I blink and there it is. Right behind him, in the split second I blinked. He calms me down and talks me through it, saying it was just M being a dickhead. About an hour passes of nothing happening, and I go inside only to see this thing again, in our chook pen. Just staring at me. I tell my parents and sister, is, and she says she put her hand in the spa and did it all. The spa was bone dry, at the time of this. If anyone has any insight about this, please let me know. I have looked online throughout the years, but the only thing that somewhat resembles what I saw, was the rake or a version of Slenderman I drew. But a couple years ago, with few facial features. Eyes, mouth. My friend at work, had a paranormal-like experience like this one I had. I hope that this is the right place to post this. Let me know, in the comments below. What do you think about OP's encounter? What do you think grabbed OP? This is not the first time I'm seeing shadow people. Nor is it my first paranormal rodeo. 
It is the first time in my five years of living in this flat, that shadow people surfaced. For the past few weeks, I've seen shadow people, out of the corner of my eye. It's always a shadowy, human-like figure. But it is as if the body has no substance. I've never seen these apparitions, in my current home before. Recently, things have become strained between the landlord and me. And I'm convinced that these apparitions are the manifestations of his ill intent. He wants us out, but he's too coward to boot my partner and me outright. The appearance of these figures is also coupled with a change in the landlord's behavior. Where he used to be open and inviting, he became greedy and mean-spirited. I also seem to notice shadow people a day or two before I receive an email. A bad one. From the landlord. I'm not quite sure what to make of this, but I'm convinced the shadow people I'm seeing now are a manifestation of some kind. I'm curious if anyone else has had an experience like this. Edit. I've also noticed other things. I'm a ghostwriter, so I make my living by writing non-fiction. It's an easy enough job, but I've noticed that it is becoming increasingly harder to concentrate. Coupled with that, I always seem to be in a position of financial distress. Not by choice. It's gotten to the point where I don't know where our next meal will come from. Thing is, my landlord knows this. But he doesn't care. He still wants his pound of flesh. Ever since I moved into this flat, it feels as if my life has become stagnant. Not sure if there is bad juju going on, or if I'm reaching for straws? All I know is I've never felt this stuck before. Here are some of the comments, from this post. Snowfiend80 commented. Do you experience any feelings of dread or irrational anger, when you notice the shadow people? Are they wearing full-brimmed hats of red, glowing eyes? It may be time to get out of there? Yet moving is a major deal that involves a lot of resources and financing. I'd look for some ways of protection such as sigils, chants, etc. Learn how to burn a bit of white sage, if possible. OP responded to Snow Fiend 80. Nah, I don't feel negative emotions when I see them. I have noticed that my stress and anger levels are in general through the roof though, especially when it comes to topics related to the landlord. Not sure if they are connected though. Stranger Pi responded to OP. They usually appear when things are tense. They like to drain energy from this type of negative emotions. Stress and anger are negative emotions. Snow Fiend 80 responded to OP. It seems that they are, although I don't have any proof of that. I suppose keep tabs on the situation and occurrences and look for a correlation. Probably might want to look for another pad, in the meantime. Good luck to you. Let me know, in the comments below. What do you think about OP's experience? Do you think the shadow people were manifested by their landlord? Before I begin, let me introduce myself. I am 24 years old guy from Bulgaria. Who had this encounter dating from few years back, when I was a teenager. It was one of those days during summer break. Where I'd visit my grandparents occasionally to let off steam after the end of another school year. One of my cousins was quite insistent to explore an abandoned old house right next to ours, which we believed that it was haunted. As we entered the front yard, I had the uneasy feeling that we were being watched. But my younger cousin thought I was joking and brushed it off. Once we were at the house's yard, I saw the cellar door of the house move slightly inwards, but there wasn't any wind. Causing us to dart away from there. On the next day, him and I went to a smaller area right next to that same old house, to play with a soccer ball. As time passed, I felt something again whilst passing the ball to my cousin, and caused me to turn my attention to that attic window of the old house. Where I saw a shadowy figure grinning back at me. But I neither flinched nor screamed, just stood still with neutral expression. With what felt like a full minute, I shook myself out of the thing that just happened. And turned to my cousin to ask if he saw it too, but he didn't believe me. That creepy grin the thing had on its face remained a memory in my mind, but I still remember the encounter to this day. Couldn't have been just my imagination, or I really encountered a haunted place. Here are a few of the comments, from this post. Josette22 commented. After I read your post, the first thing I thought of is Crawler. Crawlers like to frequent abandoned houses, barns, sheds, abandoned buildings. 
and they many times have a sardonic grin or smile, however, they are very white and not depicted as being shadow-like. OP responded to Josette 22. As you mentioned that. It could have been a crawler, but it also seemed like it stood more upright, like most paranormal creatures. Comprehensive Emu 972 also commented. I believe your encounter was that of the demonic. OP responded to Comprehensive Emu 972. Yeah, whatever that thing was, gave me very creepy feelings about being really close to that old house. In the comments below, let me know what you think about OP's experience. What creature do you think OP saw? This is something I experienced shortly before moving out of one of my teenage homes, a couple of years ago. When I was around 13 or 14 years old, my great-grandmother used to collect dolls. One of the dolls I took a particular liking to, because of how goddamn creepy it looks. She picked up on it, and actually gave it to me not too long before she passed away. Fast forward to the story at hand. My two stepbrothers and I were sitting in the living room chatting late at night, around 1am or so. For context, this is a cookie cutter house, so when you walk in, you basically have to choose between going upstairs or downstairs. The living room is directly upstairs from the front door. There is a fireplace on the left hand wall, but not much else to note, since it was an open concept. Adjacent to the wall, there was the railing overlooking the doorway area. And in front of the railing is the couch. There is also a television sitting on the ground on the wall opposite to the couch. During the conversation, we got on the topic of childhood paranormal experiences. Joking around, I went and grabbed the doll from my bedroom and leaned it up on the shelf, above the fireplace. I made sure when I put the doll up there, that it was leaning securely so as not to slip off. Some things that are now important. The television is on, but just in the no signal screen. And because we were preparing to move, there are boxes and trash bags piled in front of the fireplace, at least three to five feet out. We were all sitting on the couch, at the time this happens. In the middle of a story my younger stepbrother was telling about an experience he had, in the basement of a childhood home, the doll was flung forward from the shelf. Landing a good few feet away from the boxes, meaning it flew a good six to eight feet away from the fireplace. At the exact same time the doll made contact with the ground, the television shut itself off and turned itself back on. We have never had any electrical issues in that house, or with that TV. Needless to say, we about pissed ourselves. I know people are going to say it's possible that the doll has just fallen, but the doll flew forward off of the shelf. Even though it was leaning backwards. And things that fall don't typically fall outwards several feet. Let me know what you all think, if this post gets traction. I'll post a picture of the doll. Here are some of the comments, from this post. Mother Tradition 2239 commented. Wow, that's crazy. My theory, from what I've experienced, is that maybe your own energy from touching the doll and speaking about the paranormal sort of made it happen. I can't explain it exactly, but what I've experienced is that one night I sat up in bed almost immediately after waking up. I heard a picture fall in my bathroom and that picture really had no way of falling off the wall. It was hanging on a wire on a nail, it had to have jumped up and forward to be able to come off the wall. The picture just so happened to have my name painted on it because the artist has the same name as me. That really creeped me out because it wasn't like it woke me up. I specifically awoke out of a deep sleep and immediately I heard it crash down. When I told someone about it they said when you're menstruating, pregnant, in puberty, or otherwise in a state of hormones running high. That somehow we, as humans, can affect the movement of solid objects around us. Just a theory, but it is intriguing if maybe you can make this connection with what happened with your doll. OP responded to Mother Tradition 2239. It's possible I suppose. We haven't had any prior activity with the doll, and nothing has happened since. We were thinking that speaking about this entity or spirit may have caught its attention. That actually reminds me of another experience I've had before this one. Living in a mobile home with just my mother. One night we were both woken up by a loud noise, and when we went out to investigate. Everything hanging on a particular wall had fallen. And while it's possible only the last crash woke me up. I only heard one, so I'm pretty sure that all fell simultaneously. Ren Fanin also commented. It's the theory of poltergeist. 
Your energy creates certain phenomena. It's super interesting actually. Let me know, in the comments below. What do you think about OP's experience? Do you believe their doll is haunted? This has been a crazy ride, and I'll bring you any updates in future videos. If you've stuck with me until the end, you're amazing. If you want to catch more episodes in the Paranormal series, or any of my other series, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, to never miss a future video. If you enjoyed this content, smash the like button, and leave a comment down below. If you would like your encounter featured on a future video, you can send it to contacthistoryunicorn at gmail.com. You can submit anonymously or I can give you a shout out, just let me know your preference in the email. Until next time, be safe out there. You never know what you might find.